Stay with the blaze the way people. This is only for my people representing here in the house Leo Aficionado, our brother in weed. Thank you for coming here. I, you know, you big bro here for HQ Fam, and uh, yeah, this man. is our HQ meet and greet sessions. Uh, we share here things, just, uh, you know, I really appreciate what you've done for our, you know, sector. It's yeah, no, no. Thank you, a huge man. job. Thank you, brother. It's an honor being here, man. Just please, let's start with your roots, yeah, you know, man. like something about your farm, where you're coming from, what's yeah, up. Man. Thank you, bro. Thank you. So I'm a transplant in California. You know, um, I think, oh. you know, so a lot of the, you know, a lot of the people that, that come from my area, you're either from that area or you've wanted to be in that area and you've done anything to get in that area, you know? And so I kind of fall into that category where like, I looked up to the people that were there and that were part of that culture and I wanted nothing else but to be a part of that culture and be in it. Cause I had a time in my life where cannabis brought me to a place because it was illegal. And so cannabis was my only choice. I had to make that work or I had to, or I had to give up what, what I live for, I had to give up you know, what I stand for as a person, I wasn't willing to do that. So I was willing to do cannabis or die trying because that's where my love was at. And I was like, I'm gonna make this work. I'm gonna swim until we fucking make this work. And if I, and if, and if I drown, then I drown because at least I tried, you know what I'm saying? It's like that thing where it's like, I'd rather live a day as a lion than a life as a sheep. You know what I mean? So it was like, for me, I always looked up to people in cannabis. It wasn't like, that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to be bad like motherfuckers like you. I wanted to be bad like my partner, Josh. I wanted to be those guys. That's all I wanted to be. So it's like, that was like the compass. I was like, all right, I'm in Mendo. Let's fucking do it. I was like, I wanted to be like Shiloh. The first time I met Shiloh in fucking 2010. It was the first time I met him through Alan's house. I was sitting at Alan's house and I saw some of the best fucking flower I ever seen in my life. And the first thing I talked about was like, how the fuck did you do that? I want to be like that. I want to do what you guys do. I want to, I want to be that fucking raw. You know, and so that was like, you know, the whole thing I wanted to do. It was all a dream, eh? It was all a dream, bro. It was all a dream. <laughs> <laughs> I used to read yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, magazine. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Salt and pepper. Yeah. Uh, that's what's up. That's what's up. Yeah, man. Um, why do you think we, we go follow the questions from our members? You know, there is a big interest from their part uh, to your person. Yeah, man. Like uh, with influencers here in HQ Meet and Greet, Leo Aficionado. Why do you think it's so important to keep a sector to produce boutique designer cannabis for private clients? Why do you prefer this over massive cannabis sales? Am I right? I mean, like your products, you know, all, all the line. There's some common, you know, we have here between HQ and your brand. Just tell us about this this thing I think when you look at cannabis it could be whatever you want it to be whether you're smoking it you could be whatever you want it to be or if you're growing it and you're making it you could be whatever you want it to be but we always felt that it could be something higher right where's the where's the where's the John Paul Gaultier cannabis gonna come from where's the Chanel Coco cannabis come from where's the Louis Vuitton gonna fuck where's Tom Ford cannabis at right fucking now because that exists that, that, that customer demographic, that exists. And it's not just about that, but that industry exists in the first place because they honor a craft. This is the zenith. This is the absolute best expression of this craft. We're not saying that this is the best, but I'm so passionate about it. I'm willing to put myself out here. I'm willing to risk failure to be able to demonstrate this in this way, to communicate this product in a manner where there's already a billion dollar industry where people communicate that way and people, and people absorb that. And that doesn't exist in cannabis. And so I'm saying it's like, those people are underserved. That's an underserved demographic. They want to hear the stories. They want to hear the heritage. How much did you fucking bleed to make that bag, right? How much did you bleed to grow that cannabis? You know what I'm saying? That's like, that's everything. It's like, how much were you willing to put into it? And so it's like, when they go, why is that, where's that Hermes Kelly bag, $20,000? Well, let's talk about the leather. Let's talk about how much time it took to fucking select that leather and sew that leather together. And the, and, and, and the process, the months it took to just dye that fucking leather so that bag could last over a hundred years. They're gonna fight over that motherfucker when she's dead. That's how, that's how well it's made. You know, and so where's that gonna be in cannabis? Where's when, when, when someone dies, when that company lives on, right? Like Jack Daniels, like Jean-Paul Gaultier, these, these ubiquitous brands that are huge and worldwide where 
they started out as one person. I think Frenchie Cannoli might be one of the first people like that. You know what I'm saying? To come into cannabis and leave a lasting legacy. And so that we always wanted to do that because Frenchie was a huge influence. I was like, man, you're an OG. You, 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 you embody a craft, you communicate it, and you teach people, but you also do it in a classy way that allows people to have a market where we could have luxury cannabis one day because it's going to exist. You see me, it's like, I mean, uh, if we have here uh the line of products like uh, cognac you like cognac love french cognac, cognac. yeah cognac. you know there is like a cognac you can buy for 50 dollars but there is louis 13 which is like maybe 3500 so it, why this bottle of cognac exists this is because there is a consumer that really wants to pay this because he wants to have this cognac and the thing is like Uh, before it was like, give me the 20 bag, give me the 20 yeah, bag, you know, like, bag. all right, all right. Now we're talking that uh, right now we, um, the evolution of cannabis uh, world is so fast that somehow uh, we realize now that we have uh, products, cannabis products for about $150 a gram and it's okay you know everybody's like understand why you know what it's a lot 20 years ago I couldn't even imagine that there will be Nobody any kind of uh, gram of wheat product that I would pay 150 yeah, no no way yeah, for real. what the serious? fuck no way but it's real it's real and people pay that because they understand what goes into it and people like there's, there's different kind of customers oh, yeah. There's consumers oh, yeah. that, that will buy as a form of social stratification. Hey, I bought this expensive shit. There's people that will buy just because it's expensive because yeah. they have no other way to tell the quality. And then you have people like me and you and everybody in this club. People that try to look for the best fucking cannabis quality. possible. That's it. So they get on their phones, they get on the computer, and they do the research. And they, they want to know where it's grown, who's grown by, who extracted it, how did they extract it, what machinery did you use? You know, like, what's your experience? And not only that, but like, what's your history and your pedigree in the game, right? What also makes you raw besides your skills? You know what I mean? For It's sure, like for sure, brother. In luxury cannabis, that's yeah. kind of like the whole point of that, where we want to make boutique cannabis, why it's important. Because we can't dig in a price war with huge corporate cannabis. You know, all, all of us, a lot, lot of us outlaws that come from the old world, we're not as funded of like these Canadians, right? But what they can't compete with us on, people like me and you, they can't compete on quality. You can't scale quality. Quality over quantity? All day long, man. What the fuck? It's all they all do. All day long. It's all, it's all we do. It's like quality. If you can't, you can't, you can scale quantity all you want. That's a process. That's a mathematical process. But quality? Come on, man. Leaders, not dealers. Exactly. You know what I mean? There's, there's no formula. There's no formula to be a hit, a hit, a hit music artist. It has to come from the heart usually most of the time. When you really make music, when you really make cannabis, your heart's got to go into it because the consumer feels that. Yeah, bro. It just can't be bullshit. It's got to be. It's got to be real. It's got to be. It's got to be fucking gritty. And it's got to really communicate with people. But it's also All right, bro. Communicate with your peers. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, so 2012, <clears throat> you won that Emerald Cup, right? Yeah, man. With what? With the uh, Cam Dog Special, Cam Dog Special Reserve. Yeah. Why did you choose this train? Tell us a bit about that. You know, when we grew the, the Chem Dog for the Cup, we didn't grow it to enter it. We actually had 10 strains that we were working on at the time. And we got done with that season, we had the 10 strains. And at the time, I was, hus I was moving a lot of, I was losing a lot of packs. And so I went out to my hustler buddies, where the house was, and I brought 10 jars that were unlabeled. And I was like, hey guys, I need you guys all to open these jars and tell me which one's the most fire. And every single, but every single person, in that fucking room said the chem dog was the most fire. It was like, they opened the, they opened the jar and they was like, oh my God, we need some more of that. And so like, and then we ended up entering that and then another thing and then in, in another strain, but the chem dog was what, what, took, what took the first place, man. It was the gas, because the gas was what was big back in Humboldt back in the day. That was what's moving. It was your sour deal, OG, chem dog All was really there. rare. So as long as it was gas, it would fly. Why is the quality of the soil is so important? It's where it's it's where the taste comes from. It's everything. It's the soul of the plant. The entire life, the entire life of the earth comes from the soil. So the, the entire the, the taste, the, the expression of the plant, the immune system, it all comes from the soil. It's 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 the most important aspect of what you're smoking. You know, it's like it's it's for, and this plant evolved for millions of years. Has 30,000 genes. You can't tell me that you could grow a hydro plant with synthetic nutrients better than soil. 
in, in the medium, soil and humus, that this plant fucking evolved for millions of years to uptake, you know, to express 30,000 genes to get to express that way. You know, soil is the only way to achieve that quality, bro. Leo Aficionado here in the house, one of my old school OGs with exceptional taste. Yeah. HQ meet and greet. Um, which mythology uh, or, or which companies or what type of last lab test do you work with to check your products? Why is this so important? Man, uh, products for seeds or flowers? Because we, we produce flowers and we produce seeds. Uh, I think we talk about flowers yeah, here. Flowers. So, so testing is, you got to test the, the plant when it's in veg. You know, test your clone, see, see, see how it's testing, and then you test it all the way through, all the way to the end. You don't want to be putting out fucking medicine that's going to make people sick. I know people, and, and I'm one of those, you can grow the best organic crop possible, but something might go wrong. So you have to fucking test it so you know. You know, a, a chef will never not taste his food before he serves it. They always taste the food before they serve it. <laughs> for sure, that's for sure. Yeah, man. That's what's up. So we here uh, with Leo and uh, once again, thanks uh, Thank you for much, you know having you here. We really stoked here, it. really the famous stoked. Uh, uh, let's see what's up uh, with the Masters of Frozen. Uh, I mean, did you have a chance to look through the you? You're the he's the judge. Yeah, man. Yes, yeah. he is the judge. So yeah, this tonight. year, what's up? Somebody what's up? Got to see some of the entries. Fuck. That's all I could say. It was a bad word. It was like when I saw, I was like, damn, everybody brought their A game. It's like the quality across the board is a lot different from the rosins we used to see at the different rosin competitions of yesteryear and even in the States. Oh, yeah. It was like back when we were in Cali, you couldn't leave Cali and see that quality. Now you leave Cali, you're seeing almost better quality in some places, especially here, man. People are really bringing their fucking A game, putting their heart into it. It goes to show it doesn't matter where you're from. Imagine just how much you fucking love it. How much you want to put your heart Home in? is where your heart is. Yeah, man. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. 100%, bro. All right. We're here, and maybe uh, uh, can you just tell us, like, throw some last message to HQ followers? Man, um, this, is the highest this is the baddest fucking club in Barcelona, period. How about that? You Boom. Heard it? Right here. Right here. <laughs> <laughs> For real, man. You guys are Thank a, you, a huge inspiration, man. Thank you. Really, no one Thank does it like you guys. Yes. Anybody watching, you come to you come to HQ. You won't come to a club that looks like this. You won't come to a club that has this energy. You see this energy? You see this people? This is culture. This is how you know a fucking strain is not bullshit because everyone's smoking it. Everyone's saying that's good, that's bad, that's real culture. And this is like clubs like this make champions. This is why they find the quality. This is why they do Masters of Rising. It's the realness. Thank you, bro. Yeah, man. Much love, man. Much love, bro. Yeah. Big, Much love. big love, man. Thank you. Hell yeah. Thank you. Thank you.